In this video, we're going to introduce ScalaFX. This is the GUI library that we're going to use for writing all of our GUIs through uh, the rest of, of the book. And ScalaFX happens to be a wrapper around the JavaFX library that makes it so it works better with uh, the Scala language, so it has more of kind of the Scala style syntax. It turns out that JavaFX is actually the third GUI and graphics library for Java. When Java was first released, it came with a library called AWT, which stood for the Abstract Windowing Toolkit. Uh, AWT kind of lacked flexibility. It only had elements that could work for basically every operating system. Um, and it used those operating system elements. It was pretty quickly replaced by Swing, which was a pure Java uh, library. And the advantage that Swing had was because it was all written in Java, they were able to include lots of different elements. So it could have much more um, interesting and, and kind of uh, diverse elements in the, in the GUI. Unfortunately, it happened to also be very slow, at least originally. They were able to improve that over time. And Swing has been the primary graphics library for the Java uh, environment for, for many years. But recently, uh, they came out with JavaFX, and Oracle has now said they would like for everyone to migrate to JavaFX. They do not wish to continue adding stuff on to Swing. And so for, for what we're going to do, we're going to start using ScalaFX. So we're going to do things kind of in the new way, the way that's recommended to do them now, instead of going back to Swing. Now ScalaFX, as I said, is a wrapper. It's not part of the standard library, and so ScalaFX.org is the website you can go to that will it gives you little tutorials on how to do some things in ScalaFX. There is a link here to the API, uh, so you can go through. You'll see this is a very large API. There's lots of stuff here. Um, and there's also the source code on GitHub. We will come back to this in just a minute because it turns out that you need to be able to kind of build uh, ScalaFX for yourself, or you can go and download it. I'm going to show you how we could build it real quick uh, in just a bit. The API has lots of elements in it, and to help illustrate this, I have created a little, <laughs> a little UML diagram um, showing you kind of the some of the primary classes that are part of ScalaFX. Yes, there's there's actually a lot of them in here. And one of the things that you'll note is that there are lots of these inheritance arrows. This is part of why we cover inheritance before we cover um, the GUIs, because GUI libraries have a tendency to use lots of subtyping. So at the top here, we kind of have these main classes. There's a window type, and for the most part, we will be dealing with a subtype that is below stage called primary stage. There is a scene. Your window gets to have a scene that is displayed. And then into scenes, you are able to add nodes. And of course, you can see there are a very large number of different subtypes of nodes. We are not going to cover all of these. And there's some cool things like the, the ability to do 3D graphics. The media viewer allows you to add movies and whatnot in there. The things that we're going to deal with, for our drawing program, we need the canvas uh, because that is how we are going to draw onto things. And then down here under parent region, there are two subtypes called control and pane. And you can see there's a fair number of panes here and there's a whole bunch of different controls. The panes will allow us to lay things out uh, so that we can get the desired visual appearance and placement of the elements that we're putting in. And the elements we're going to put in, with the exception of the canvas, are mostly going to be different controls from here. We are not going to see all of these controls. As you can see, there, there's a large number of them. We'll, we'll play with a number of them. We'll pull a number of them into our GUI for doing our drawings, but we can't cover all of these. So interested viewers are highly encouraged to go to the ScalaFX site and look up you know, some of the different things that are there but we're not going to be able to cover quite all of them. So, this ScalaFX site, I want to show you how you could build a, uh, a basically the jar file that we're gonna need for writing code here. So I, I'm going to go to clone or download, and we will clone, so 
So I'm going to run git clone. You will have to have, there's some software you're going to have to have installed if you want to do it this way. Once again, I try to keep some of these available, uh, definitely for my students, posted on the website for, for the book. Recent builds, but you need to have a build that actually works for the version of Scala and the version of Java that you are using on your computer. So if I do this git clone, it is cloning into a directory called ScalaFX. And so I can cd into ScalaFX and we can look, there's a number of files in here. And this uses a program called SBT, which is the Scala build tool. So I'm going to run SBT. If you don't have SBT installed, you will have to, to install that if you're gonna build this on your own. And it will go through and check to make sure that it has everything that it needs. I want to compile this. We might get a few warnings. Oh, actually there was something that I wanted to do before I compiled this. Right now I am compiling for Scala 2.10, which is not the version of Scala that we are using here. Uh, so we will have to, and you will have to, set this to use your version of Scala. Once this is done compiling, we can change the version of Scala and recompile. So I don't want 2.10.6, I happen, my Eclipse is running 2.11.8 at the time of making this video, that is the most recent uh, stable version. And so we need this to compile. Once that's done, okay, so you can say plus plus 2.11.8 on mine. You should check to see what version of Scala you have on, on your computer. And then we can compile using that. And we'll go through and do the compilation once again. After we've compiled it, we're going to give SBT the command package. And that package is going to take all the stuff that it's compiled and stick it all together inside of what's called a jar file, a Java archive. Um, and that is what we can include inside of Eclipse to make it so that we can uh, work with ScalaFX. So as soon as this is done compiling, I will execute the package command. So I say package, and you can see here it said that it put a file out under ScalaFX, there's one in demos, there's another one in ScalaFX target 2.11, and then this snapshot file. And that's what we're going to use inside of, of Eclipse. So I can go ahead and exit out of SBT because I have what I need there. And then we can pull up Eclipse. Now just to show you what it will look like if you don't have that jar file, let's go ahead and let's create a new package. I am in the section on GUIs and graphics. And I'm gonna create a, pack, a sub package called drawing because this is where we're gonna put everything for our drawing program. We'll write a few other programs in here to demonstrate different features of, of ScalaFX, but they'll just be in the GUIs and graphics package. So let's go ahead and let's create an object. And I'm going to call it drawing main. Now we've seen previously that if I wanted this to be a normal app, I could just say extends app. That would give me the command line applications that we've been using. In order to create a ScalaFX application though that pops up a window and does what we want there, I need to extend JFX app. Of course that's not happy. If I hit my keystroke of, I actually have a reference library here. Let's go through and I wanna show you, um, so I right click on our package, or our, sorry, our project and I'm gonna to go to configure build path. I'm gonna remove that jar file. And I'm gonna add the one that we just built. So add external jar. And this was in ScalaFX, ScalaFX target 2.11. And here's that jar file that it made. So I'm gonna add that in And now this is a happy program. It's able to do the import there. If you try to write this and you don't have the ScalaFX jar in your reference libraries, it won't be happy, it won't compile. 
I can now run that and while well, it popped up off to the side here's a nice little window uh, that's all we needed to make a window and when we close the window our program terminates so that's our first cut at you've you've seen what Scala FX is we've made the simplest app we can which just pops up a window we'll come back next time and we'll start talking about how we can create controls and lay them out in panes and actually start writing a more significant JavaFX application.